And Little Sister is a story that I'm going to start, but I'm not going to tell you. 18, at least 18, year, 18, 19 years ago, I got a phone call from a lady called Camille Massey, who was in The Hague at the time. And uh, she said, um, hi, I'm Camille Massey. I'd love to come and meet you. I've been given your name by Peter Gabriel. I work for the Lawyers Committee for Human Rights in New York, and we want a new identity, and Peter suggested I come and meet you. And I'm flying through London the next day or so, could this happen? So we met, and um, uh, I, started, I did the, worked on this project for the, for the Lawyers Committee for Human Rights, and I ended up being the first time I ever went to New York, and it's kind of like a beginning of another love affair with another city. And uh, while I was there, um, I understood um, that the Lawyers Committee for Human Rights were coupling with this amazing thing called Witness. And, uh, and they showed me a piece of film which changed my life forever. But without any saying any more, I'd just like to invite Peter Gabriel to come and tell the story because it was his idea that began the whole thing. Privacy might be a thing that belongs to the last century. And, uh, before reality TV got hold of Big Brother, uh, Big Brother was something where people maintained control through observation. And uh, Little Sisters basically trying to tip that upside down. Uh, as a young man, I didn't know a whole lot about human rights. I'd read the odd bit in the newspaper or see a bit on the television. But uh, I got the call in 1986 to go out on um, a tour for Amnesty. And uh, that put me, uh, for the very first time, face to face with people who'd been tortured, people who watched their families shot in front of them. And uh, suddenly it was no longer distant. It was right in front of me and it was very hard to, to walk away from. And then a couple of years later in 88, um, we got a group of musicians together, again for Amnesty and the um, of the Declaration of Human Rights, which was having its 40th anniversary. And we took this tour in two planes, one full of musicians, the other full of gear, around the world. And sometimes when countries thought it was a little too difficult and they didn't want us, we'd be sitting in the front of the plane with a map of the world, thinking, where can we land and play? And it was, uh, it was an amazing experience that changed all the musicians who took part. But one of the other extraordinary things was that you'd meet these people who'd gone through horrific experiences and uh, they'd survived, or some of them did, only very often to have their stories denied, uh, forgotten, really effectively buried. And occasionally there would be some film and the film, even if it was just people in very simple, direct terms, explaining what had happened to them or their loved ones, um, was enough, often, to keep a thing alive and uh, to keep it real and make sure that it couldn't be buried. So we made a proposal to uh, the Reebok Human Rights Foundation, which had been set up around that tour, because they'd funded this stuff for Amnesty. And for a couple of years, it sat on the, on the desk and then uh, the Rodney King incident happened, which was when someone just happened to have a video camera um, and caught this police beating going on in America. And suddenly people started thinking, OK, maybe these cameras that are getting cheaper and cheaper, we can actually use and, and uh, uh, push out there and, and get stuff um, that is going to make a difference. Because there was a big political outcry and a lot of changes went on in the way uh, police treated people. Um, hasn't completely uh, eradicated the problem, but, but it, it was a real weapon um, on, for little sister on the other side. So witness began about uh, 18 years ago with some funding from Reebok and uh, was operated by the Lawyers Committee for Human Rights and then gradually became its own organization. But um, I'd had this uh, letter, I think it was, from this guy, Harry Pierce, and he made an extraordinary offer. Um, and 
for 18 years now. He's been doing extraordinary, inspiring, extra extraordinarily effective work using his skills. Um, and uh, it's been something that I think has transformed the work of, of Witness. Um, it's also extraordinary because he's never charged us a penny and he's been doing it for 18 years. And maybe uh, I'll fire it back to you, Harry. This next piece of film, uh, which I'm going to play to you before I say anything else, it just changed everything. It's rough, it's so simple. It was created by Chiat Day when Peter first kind of tried to formulate the idea to explain to the world. Anyway, this is what it was. So, so my hope was that um, the, the amount of dignity that was in that stuff and these stories that were coming out that were going to land on people's desks around the world had to kind of arrive with dignity too. And what we've tried to do, um, and I've got to say, I've had teams of people working on this with me for all those years, and I've also had amazing partners, including Dominic and my partners now, who've never wavered in their support. Um, I mean, Peter said to me when we, when we started, uh, you, you do this, but don't you ever let it kind of threaten your livelihood. Uh, and we've had some close shaves, but it's never come to that. But it's, um, uh, it's about, it's my balance. It's about making this a part of your daily life. It isn't just the occasional poster. We do everything every day that witness need. The, so things like this are just, you know, simple ideas of the most vulnerable thing in society are kids, the infants. And the most vulnerable thing in an army is the infantry. And you put those two together, you know, it's... Um, so each year there's a major campaign. This is one that we did two years ago or so uh, for, for Burma, where the military junta were burning, burning up to 3,000 villages all around the edges of Burma in East Timor. And I did this poster as a kind of iconic moment to sum up that activity. But what I didn't know a few months later was when, when, the, when this regime would, would suppress the Buddhist monks uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the outrages and the, and the horrors that then happened. And what I discovered, I got a phone call from Witness saying, you know, get on the TV, turn it on. on um, the, uh, the poster we had done was being marched down the street in cities all over the world. And it was just an incredible moment for me. And I thought, if I'd never do anything else ever again, this is the best that I can get. I can't do more than that. Again, a simple idea with its own trajectory. And some of the things that I've done is just trying to turn phrases into, into a visual something so they've got a little bit more clout to them. This is something called see and believe. And Peter and I were talking about the idea of seeing is believing. And he beautifully reduced it down to these two words. And wherever you have a picture, you have the word see. And where you have the pragmatic fact of how things were changed, we use the word believe. And technology, obviously, has changed. Um, everything can be on a, on, a, on a little telephone now. And a, a couple of years ago, Peter also came up with this idea of the hub. And this is a short film that just explains what the hub is.
the little mark that we made uh, to try and capture that spirit. The final little bit, I'm just going to hand back to Peter to kind of finish yeah, no, off. Well, last year, uh, Harry was working on uh, some covers of uh, some witness DVDs which were being put together, um, and uh, including one which was a documentary from uh, our wonderful Russian journalist called Natalia or Natasha Estemirova, and uh, she was half Chechen and was um, really reporting a lot about the abuses um, by, by the Russian soldiers, particularly uh, uh, against the Chechens. And during this time, um, we unfortunately heard that she'd been taken out um, and she was shouting out that she'd been kidnapped and was taken out by eight thugs and to the North Territories and uh, shot uh, and killed. But it just was, a, again, a reminder of um, uh, what the urgency and the need for the work. And so uh, also she gets a little name check um, at the end of this song, which uh, was my last record. So uh, hopefully we won't forget her. Thank you, Peter. <laughs>